the moon challenge has been going great so far. Let's credit our good planning and our good intent. But I think our good luck ran out on day 26 as we had a lot of clouds on the east which made it difficult to find the thin waning crescent moon on that morning. Although it was about 19% lit up, we found it difficult to figure out where it was. We found the area where it was supposed to be covered with clouds during the dawn. I'm sure if you yourself have had a look at it, you will know how beautiful the early morning sky with the colors and the bright crescent would look like. We missed out on this, but the moon became slightly visible later during the day when the skies were blue and the sun had already risen. Day 27 was better, and although the brightness of the moon had reduced to about 13%, we could still see it on the east horizon dangling like an ornament in the sky. Of course, we have promised you some nice pictures, and Revati had been clicking on day 26 to get you this only image of the moon that I have of that day. You notice that the clouds have played their part in making it slightly blurred and unclear. The Terminator has moved to cover most of the objects that we talked about in the last episode and now it's almost half covering the Mare Humorum and the crater Gassendi. So this will be a very humble goodbye to these features without actually getting to look in detail at the Terminator edge where there might have been a few more features. Of course, we should not be disappointed because this is not our last chance. We'll get other chances in the next cycle. On day 27, the moon had slid about 13 degrees more to the east and had lost about 6% of its illumination. The horizon was clear and thus we could enjoy the sight of the crescent moon in the twilight which always takes your breath away. We are very glad that we have a detailed image of the moon available for day 27. The thin clouds which still persisted on our east here were not there for Prabhu who was at a, another location and therefore he could get us this crisp image. Let us delve deeper and see what are the features that we are going to miss the next day. So continuing our goodbyes, we will have to miss out on a large portion of the ocean of storms, the Oceanus Procellarum. As a joke, I would say that this large and blank patch of flat land has reduced my work a lot by not actually having very important features in this region to talk about. But of course, the north and the south provided me enough to discuss. I think I bid a very early adieu to the crater Pythagoras, which is way up north. I remember saying bye to it on day 25 and as you can see, the terminator has hardly covered it yet. We are not so habituated to talking about spherical things when we live on land which seems to be always flat to us. But reality is far different. So this is a good reminder that on the spherical moon as well as on the spherical earth, shadows move slower closer to the poles compared to their speed closer to the equator. So let's see if Pythagoras so let's see if Pythagoras disappears tomorrow. Of course, I was also Of course, I was also scanning the terminator and the regions around for other features and there I saw a peculiar feature which does not have a name in most of the maps that I referred to. This particular round crater almost at the edge of the moon is not named in most of the easily available maps. So I'm going to look it up for you later. Slightly below it we have a rough patch at the edge of the terminator which is going to disappear on the next day. This is actually the Montes Agricola and the Valley of Chartreri, which are close to the Aristarchus crater. Aristarchus has now gone dark, although it was the brightest feature on the moon for quite a while. 
down below on this image is also the crater Marios, which is barely visible at the edge of the Terminator. Shifting further south, let me remind you that one of the most important persons in astronomy, Galileo, has a crater named after him, which is extremely insignificant and tiny on the moon compared to the many other big ones. Not that he is complaining, but such is the inclusion of politics and other social aspects into science and nomenclature sometimes. And yes, this image also contains another area which makes me smile when I think of it. So I have named these three craters in a line, the Henry craters. The one to the western edge on the moon is called what I would pronounce as Henry Fredes. It's a French word to say Henry brothers. Prosper and Paul Henry were two brothers who have contributed a lot to astronomical photography. So at some point of time, the two adjacent craters were assigned names as Prosper Henry and Paul Henry. Since they were twins, this was quite a nice touch. However, what I find funny is that in the modern nomenclature, the crater on the left is called Henry Freris, which means Henry Brothers, and the one on the right is simply called Henry. Well, if that is not funny enough, guess what the next crater here is called? Cavendish. And what was the first name of this great scientist? Henry. So this area actually has three craters in a line, all named after some or the other Henry. I'm sure the moon namers were having a lot of fun when doing this. These three Henrys will be gone in the shadows on the next day. And we'll also have the shadow probably covering up this large crater, which is the prominent one visible in this picture called Shikar. So that kind of wraps up all the interesting stuff from this particular image. We wish you all the best of efforts and luck for the last one or two days, depending on where you are on the earth, of looking at the moon in this moon challenge. Do take the effort and complete the challenge. While doing it, of course, you should not forget about the notes that we had started taking. Do you remember this table with some of the general information I had requested you to note along with us? Well, I do have a complete table, but this is something you should try to fill up just to keep an idea of what observing a series of events scientifically feels like. Most of these things will not change if you take up the challenge once more at some other time in the year. But I think the timings may change because of the seasons. I'm sure there are many other technical details which you could put in in various columns after these ones to make it a more scientific and more accurate note of the whole challenge experience. But here I will also say, don't make it very mechanical. You see, this is your experience and you should try to preserve your own personal feelings as well. So while writing details and data in your table, also take a moment to think of other things like maybe the first words or the songs that came to your mind. Did you draw or sketch or photograph the moon? Or did you write something about it? Did you have something to eat while you were looking at the moon? Were you sharing it with somebody? Or did you want to share it with somebody? These are the things that will make this not just a challenge, but a memory. So make these memories and share them with the hashtag moonchallenge. You're also welcome to send us your pictures, writings, etc. at our email ID. But now that we have reached such a late stage in the challenge, don't give up. Let's finish this together. We will be back very soon with more details about the waning moon in the coming days. Till then, make sure you put up that alarm and wake up early to see the crescent. All the best.